Look up at the night sky. Really look at it. Thousands of stars scattered across a vast black canvas. Silent, calm, dark. Now here is a question that should make you a little uncomfortable. If the universe is filled with stars in every direction, why isn't the night sky completely bright? Think about it. In an infinite universe packed with stars, every single line of sight should eventually end on a star's surface. No gaps, no darkness. Just light piled on top of light until the entire sky glows as brightly as the surface of the sun. Yet, when night falls, what we see is darkness punctured by tiny points of light. Something just doesn't add up. This contradiction has a name, Ober's Paradox, and it quietly reveals one of the most important truths about the universe we live in. At first glance, the paradox feels almost trivial. Of course, the night sky is dark. The stars are far away, and space is big. But distance alone doesn't solve the problem, because even faint, distant stars add up. If stars extend infinitely in all directions, their combined light should overwhelm the darkness, no matter how far away they are. To understand why this is so unsettling, imagine standing in the middle of an endless forest. No matter which direction you look, your line of sight eventually hits a tree. You don't see darkness between the trees. You see bark, leaves, and trunks. Now, just replace those trees with stars. In an infinite, eternal universe, the sky should be a solid wall of light. Yet it isn't. This paradox bothered astronomers for centuries, long before modern telescopes or space travel. Even in the 16th century, thinkers were already asking this question. But it was Heinrich Olbers, an 18th century astronomer, who framed it clearly enough for it to haunt science. At first, scientists tried simple explanations. Maybe space absorbs light. Maybe dust blocks it. Maybe stars are just unevenly distributed. But each of these answers failed under closer inspection. Dust would heat up and re-radiate the light. Absorption would just delay the brightness. An uneven distribution would still fill the sky eventually. The darkness remained unexplained. So let's peel back the first layer. What assumptions are we making without even realizing it? We're assuming the universe is infinite in size, infinite in age, and static unchanging over time. If all three of those are true, the night sky cannot be dark. Period. So if the night sky is dark, at least one of those assumptions must be wrong. And this is where things get really interesting. Let's start with time. What if the universe hasn't existed forever? Light travels at a finite speed, about 300,000 kilometers per second. It's fast, but it's not infinite. That means when you look at a star, you're seeing it as it was in the past. Some stars you see tonight no longer even exist. Their light is still on its way to us. Now imagine a universe with a beginning. A finite age. In that universe, there hasn't been enough time for light from all stars, especially the most distant ones to reach us yet. There are regions of space whose light simply hasn't arrived. Suddenly darkness starts to make sense. The night sky is dark not because stars aren't there, but because the universe hasn't had enough time to light itself up completely. This idea alone weakens the paradox, but it doesn't fully resolve it. Because even within the observable universe, the part whose light asterisk has asterisk reached us, there are still countless stars. Enough, in theory, to make the sky much brighter than it is. So we have to peel another layer. What if the universe isn't static? In the early 20th century, astronomers made a shocking discovery. Galaxies are moving away from us. Not just drifting, but racing. And the farther away they are, the faster they recede. Space itself is expanding. This changes everything. As the universe expands, light traveling through it gets stretched. Its wavelength increases. This process is called redshift. Visible light slowly slides into infrared, then into microwave radiation, then into radio waves, all of which are completely invisible to the human eye. So even when distant stars and galaxies emit enormous amounts of light, much of that light never reaches us as visible brightness. It fades in the darkness, not by disappearing, but by shifting out of sight. The universe isn't just big. 
it's growing. And that growth actively dims the cosmos. Let's just pause on that. The night sky is dark not because the universe lacks light, but because space itself actively stretches and cools that light over time. But there's still one more layer to uncover. Stars don't last forever. They are born, they burn, and they die. In an eternal universe, stars would have had infinite time to shine. But in our universe, stars have lifespans. Some live for millions of years, others for billions. Eventually, their fuel runs out and their light stops. This means the universe is not uniformly luminous across time. There were eras before stars existed, and there will be eras after most stars are gone. We just happen to live in a brief cosmic window where stars exist at all. Now, step back and connect these pieces. The universe has a finite age. It is expanding. Light redshift. And stars are temporary. Put it all together, and Ober's paradox completely collapses. The night sky is dark because the universe is young, dynamic, and evolving. And that realization quietly points to something much, much bigger. It points to the Big Bang. Long before scientists could directly observe cosmic background radiation, Ober's paradox was already hinting that the universe had a beginning, that it wasn't eternal. That time itself had a starting point. The darkness of the night sky isn't empty space. It's evidence. In fact, if you could see beyond visible light, the sky wouldn't be dark at all. It would glow uniformly in microwaves, the faint afterglow of the early universe, stretched across space by billions of years of expansion. That glow exists. We've measured it. It's called the cosmic microwave background, and it's one of the strongest confirmations that the universe began in a hot, dense state. So here's the twist. The darkness you see at night is not a sign of nothingness. It's a sign of history. It tells a story about how old the universe is, how fast it's expanding, and how energy transforms over time. It shows that everything you see is part of an ongoing process, not a static backdrop. And now for the unsettling part. The night sky will not always look like this. As the universe continues to expand, more and more galaxies will slip beyond our observable horizon. Their light will never reach us. Stars will burn out. New stars will become rarer. In the far distant future, the sky will grow darker and darker. The stars you see now are a fleeting gift. This moment, this view of the cosmos is special. There was a time when the night sky had no stars at all. And there will be a time when it returns to that profound darkness. We are standing right in the middle of it all. So the next time you look up at the night sky and feel small, remember this. The darkness above you is not empty. It is shaped by time, motion, and cosmic limits. It exists because the universe is alive, changing, and finite. And the simple fact that the sky is dark is one of the strongest clues we have that the entire universe had a beginning. So let me leave you with one final question. When you stare into the darkness of space, are you looking at nothing? Or are you looking at the quiet edge of everything that has ever existed and everything that ever will? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey into the cosmos, don't forget to like and subscribe for more mind-bending science.